This will be Kevin Owens face if we don't hit 2,000 likes on this video. Don't piss off Kevin Owens. And don't forget to comment down below for a potential shout out in a future video. What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the third of our last WWE Elite Series 82 in 1 reviews on the brand new Elite 80 Kyle O'Reilly and Bailey figures from Elite Series 80. And today we are going to be ranking Elite Series 80 from worst to best in my own personal opinion. One thing that we have to cover before we even get started is look at my Kyle O'Reilly. This is not the War Games gear, guys. This is not the War Games gear. Do you know what this means, Brad? This means that now my Bobby Fish and my Kyle O'Reilly are not going to match because Ringside sent me the Chase variant version of Kyle O'Reilly instead of the War Games gear, which isn't the biggest deal. It's really not a big deal. I'll just pick up the War Games attire later on or in a week or so. I'll probably order it very, very soon and I'll get that thing in here, but I thought that was hilarious that I've been, like, I never ever get the Chase variant from Ringside. Like, it just never happens. I never ever receive the Chase variant. And then the one time I get the Chase variant, it's a tag team and it's not, and it's the, the this time the Chase variant is inherently worse than the regular version. Like, I think everybody would agree that this version is worse than the War Games attire. And we've been waiting on the War Games attire. I've been wanting the War Games Undisputed Era forever now. He was going to match our Bobby Fish and our Roderick Strong, and I was going to do a fix-up where I made an Adam Cole out of the Kyle O'Reilly. But it doesn't look like that's going to happen right now, at least at this juncture. So that is something to take note of. And now, you guys know that I talked about maybe the torso being a slight modification of the Daniel Bryan torso. It's not looking that way as we get into it. Bailey, thank Christ, I can now get rid of my other Bailey figure. I'm so happy to replace my network spotlight. I cannot wait to crack open Bailey, guys. But looking at your front viewing windows here, you can see the figures there. On the side of the packaging, you have a picture of both guys. You got the uh, bio reads. If you'd like to read it, you can pause it now. Rest of the figures in the wave that we've already reviewed. A beautiful image of both men here. My bad, Bailey. A picture of the man and woman here. And that pretty much does it for our packaging. So let's go ahead and crack Kyle O'Reilly and Bailey out of their packaging. So here's Bailey and Kyle O'Reilly out of their packaging, guys. And you know what? I'll have to say I am. When we do the ranking of Elite Series 80, I gotta judge this as if it were the War Games gear because it's simply just a repaint. So I'm gonna rank it as if it's the War Games gear just to give you guys a heads up. Now, I know how nice that figure's gonna look. I can look at my Bobby Fish and kind of tell what the camo is gonna look like. I love the head sculpt of the Kyle O'Reilly already, but we are gonna take a closer look at it and everything like that. But what we're gonna do is cover Bailey's accessories first and then Bailey, and then we'll run it back, take a closer look at Kyle O'Reilly and then we will do our comparisons and, of course, rank Elite Series 80 from worst to best and see where the hell these guys match up. So let's go ahead and dive into Bailey's accessories. So for Bailey's accessories, guys, it's actually quite interesting. The night she wore this attire, I'm pretty sure she turned heel. It was her first heel turn ever, and she came out with, you know, her, her normal entrance, and she came out with this little stick right here, and she said, to hell with that, Brad. She cut off her hair, and she cut off her damn bubble buddy thing thingamajig. She tore down her Bailey buddy and she stabbed the hell out of him and she got rid of him and this is very nice sculpt. You know it is a it's like a rubbery material you guys can see you can bend it up and stuff so it's not cloth you can't blow this up or anything but I think it's pretty cool you can do some pretty cool photography with it I like the sculpt that they got going on with the base it looks just like a base I've seen for a you know a blow up. A wacky wait what do they call them? A wacky waving a wacky waving flailing arm tube man a wacky wacky inflatable flailing arm tube man. You guys know what I'm talking about if you watch Family Guy. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Hi, I'm Al Harrington, president and CEO of Al Harrington's wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man emporium and warehouse. But here is this. It's in a nice blue color. I like the paint on it. The sculpt is nice, but I don't know what the hell I'll do with this, but you know, it's there. You also come with the stick that she stabbed it with, which I don't know what this is exactly, but she punctured it and I'm going to use it as a taser. It just kind of looks like a like a animal taser or something. You just bzz, just bzz, bzz. So I'll probably use it for that. And then out of the packaging she does come with mic holding hands and out or out of the packaging she comes with fisted hands and then she also has her mic holding hands which I will also plug into the figure but if you guys want to know what those look like here they are just your standard fist hands and those are nice right there but that does it for Bailey's accessories guys so let's dive into Bailey herself so diving into Bailey herself guys as we can see here I like this head sculpt I don't think it's like immaculate I feel like she wears a lot more dark makeup around her eyes but for the most part I like it I like the
like the hair sculpt. It looks like Bailey. I can get on board with it. I still think the eye makeup for sure needs to be heavier around the eyes. Maybe that's something we can customize. We'll have to see about that, but I think that would make the figure look a lot better. On her top, it does say Bailey. I call this the AEW attire because when she wore this, it was in gold, white, and black, and silver, and she had the WWE Championship or the Women's Championship on, and so it would say AEW right across there. I always thought that was interesting, but on this attire, the, the attire that Mattel gave it or the color that they gave it is more of like a pale yellow when in reality, I'm pretty sure it was more of a goldish color and more brighter, like glittery gold instead of this pale yellow, but it still works. I'm not complaining. It's just something to take note of there. On the back, you got the nice stripes and straps. You got our black wrist tape. Cuts down here on the abdomen. You have the pale yellow. I am getting some marks and inconsistencies here in the silver or the gray and the uh, pale yellow color. You got the nice black going around. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's just a weird lineup problem with the thigh there. Double jointed knees look good and oh my god, I'm just now noticing something, guys. These legs are pinless. There are no joints. There are no pins in these legs. Do you guys see this? This is very interesting. I don't know what other figures. I, this is the first time I'm noticing this. I don't know if this is coming on other figures, but she has pinless legs, so there's no pins in there for you to remove that, and I don't know what how I feel about that. I think we should always keep the pins. I know it looks better aesthetically, but as far as customization, that is going to be very difficult moving forward if they removed all the pins, but she does have the nice gold boots with the stars on there. She has the stripes, but she has basic ankle articulation. Now, this is something that I do have an issue with because uh, it makes the figure hard to stand up. She doesn't have ankle pivot whatsoever, so this is the next step for women's figures is we need to see ankle pivot on all of them. Gotta have ankle pivot. It makes the figure stand up better, and they need to be able to stand and pose around just as good as the men's figures because what are we doing here, Brad? You know, we, we gotta be able to have our women's figures stand just as good as the men's figures, so that is uh, an issue I'm having with this figure. Like, it doesn't necessarily stand, you know, have terrible standing issues. It's just that the ankle gets super loose, and without the ankle pivot, it doesn't give it as much stability, so that is something to take note of, but that pretty much does it for your Bailey figure. So for your Bailey figure comparisons, guys, here is the Network Spotlight Toys R Us exclusive on the left that we have had for years and years and years, and I can finally get rid of this son of a bitch. This is the only Bailey figure I've ever owned, and I'm so sick of it because I'm sick of it. So yes, this, this thing's gotta go. The ponytail's missing. It's just garbage, bro. Sick of it. Give me your championship. You don't get that title no more. But yes, this figure is superior in every single way. It's got double jointed knees. It doesn't have the slapping hands. The head sculpt's better. It's just better, man. But we definitely need ankle pivot over here. Woo! So glad to get rid of this dude. Like, oh my god in heaven, that is nice. But now you can see the basic ankle articulation already coming into play. Yeah. And then if you want to compare Bailey to some other figures, you have the Ultimate Edition Charlotte right here, where Charlotte just kind of towers over her. So that's nice to see. You also have the Elite 78 Naomi figure right here. So that's cool to see. These women Women's figures, man, they're getting better and better. I'm loving to see it. You also have the Network Spotlight Asuka figure, and then you have to compare her to her nemesis, Sasha Football Banks. So there you go. You got Bailey up next to the rest of them, and I think it fits in perfectly with your women's figure collection. So for Kyle O'Reilly's accessories, guys, nothing too out of the ordinary. We have our standard rubber t-shirt with the Undisputed Era logo on it. I want to say this is the exact same shirt we got with Roger Strong. I could be wrong about that, but it's looking the same, and it does say Shock the System on the back. It ports in the back. We've been getting this. You know, we've been getting these rubber shirts for years and years and years, so there's nothing too crazy about it, but I probably will not use this, so I don't know. It'll just go in my never-ending bin of rubber accessories. We also have the Undisputed Era hand, so you have the nice taped hands with the Undisputed Era. It's supposed to be like, uh, like this? Like this? Like this? Like this? So that's nice. You got the Undisputed Era hands. Always nice. I wish they had double-jointed arms, but you know, it's another thing. And then we have the NXT Tag Team Championship, which I feel like is kind of hard to come by. I don't think they've made a ton of these. I know they came with the AOP. I want to say they came in some other figures, but I can't remember. NXT Tag Team Championships look good. They look great on Undisputed Era, so I'm okay with that. But that is Kyle O'Reilly's accessories. Not a lot of stuff going on. Nothing new or anything crazy going on, but that is Kyle O'Reilly's accessories, guys. So let's dive into Kyle O'Reilly himself. And diving into Kyle O'Reilly, guys, I really do love this head sculpt. I mean, one thing that I will say is maybe the eyes could be a little bit bigger, like the actual pupils and size of the eyes, I think, would make this head sculpt even better. So I think if somebody were to come in and 
add like just a dot more paint to the eyeball itself, like where the brown part is, where the pupil is. I think it would make it look a lot better, but I love the hair sculpt. It looks just like his hair. I like the colors going on. Uh, I like this torso for him. Works perfectly for Kyle O'Reilly. I don't know why in the proto images the torso looked a little different. I guess I'm just tripping ball sack or something, but he does have the undisputed armband. He has the white wrist tape, the tape fingers, the nice chase variant attire, not the War Games gear because I didn't get mine, but you know, it's all right. I'll get it somehow. Going down into the legs, you got the nice skin tone, the taped knees down there, undisputed logo, undisputed era logo here in the yellow color, nice bright and shiny. KO right here on the knee pad. If KO didn't have his molded on knee pads, I would probably put one of these knee pads on a, on a Kevin Owens figure, but since he doesn't wear knee pads like this and stuff, he has them molded onto the figure itself. I don't, you know, plan on doing that, but I thought that would be a really cool idea. And it's cool because it has the apostrophe for O'Reilly. I think that's sick. Going down to the kick pads, they're mainly all black. You have the O'Reilly down the side, the nice stitching pattern, undisputed era logo here. And it's nice to see the pattern continue all the way down onto the foot. That's a nice detail there. But that is your Kyle O'Reilly, man. Really strong figure. I like it. I wish it was the War Games gear. I know that it's supposed to be, but this is the Chase variant version. We are going to get the regular version in here. And when we do, we will definitely, you know, take a look at it and do some fix ups and stuff. But that does it for our Kyle O'Reilly figure. So for your Kyle O'Reilly figure comparisons, guys, we have the Epic Moments 3 pack undisputed era Kyle O'Reilly over here. And this head sculpt is much better. I will say I do still like this head sculpt. It's still a fine head sculpt. I do want to get multiple of these to replace that head sculpt over there because I just like this one much better. But I think the pupils of this figure still need to be darker and a little bit thicker. And I think it would throw that figure over the top. But overall, still a very nice thing to, to see here. And also, we have to compare him to his Elite 79 counterpart, which they're supposed to be in matching gear. But you got So here is the Elite 79 Bobby Fish and the Elite 80 Kyle O'Reilly. Man, wouldn't it be cool to see these match? We'll definitely get it in there. But it is just hilarious. I think that is so funny. But there is Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. And then we have to get, of course, the last two members. So we have Roddy, we have Roddy Strong right here, my boy Roddy Strong. And then we have everyone's favorite, Adam Cole. So we have our full Undisputed Era, but only two of them have the War Games gear. Kyle O'Reilly will get his soon enough, but Adam Cole is the only one we are missing now. Well, technically, two of them are missing now. But we will get this in here. And again, once I get my Kyle O'Reilly, I'm going to probably get two of them. And I'm going to fix up one of them and try to make it into an Adam Cole in the War Games gear or similar to his War Games gear. We'll just have to see how that all plays out. We'll probably do that on surgery, but there is your full Undisputed Era. Just missing the War Games attire for two guys. All right, guys, it is that time to rank Elite Series 80 from worst to best in my own personal opinion. Now, this is the time of the video for me to tell you that just because a figure comes in at the sixth spot does not mean that it's a bad figure, and just because a figure is number one does not mean that it was without fault, and it is just the greatest thing since sliced bread. Now, we're going to get into it now, guys. Let's start off with the worst figure in the ranking in my own personal thoughts and opinions, and I'm going to go with Ricochet. Now, I think it's pretty obvious as to why Ricochet comes in at the bottom. I love Ricochet. I love his figures. I think this is fantastic. I think we did get an upgrade with the nice crotch piece and the knee pads, but because it is a recycled head sculpt and the tattoo got printed over the wrist tape for whatever reason, I got to deduct some football points. The height issue is still a thing, and so I am going to uh, put it at the last ring. I still love the attire. The blue's not the most accurate, which is another thing, but overall, it's still a really good figure. I enjoy Ricochet's figures. It's just, it's the worst in this set for me. Ooh, this one's tough now. Coming into the number five, ranking guys I really did not expect this but I'm gonna go with Bailey now this one really hurt me because I really was excited for this figure not that it's a bad figure but I still think that the the pinless joints I'm not sure if I like I feel like the leg is a little bit stiff the figure doesn't feel as good as in the hand as other women's figures that we've gotten this year like I felt like Naomi and Asuka and Charlotte and Becky and all these other the Lacey Evans figure the Mandy Rose all of those other figures just felt so much better in the hand than this and I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it just feels stiff. I do not like the basic ankle joints either, and uh, she's already starting to fall over on me, but it is definitely an upgrade from her network spotlight. I don't know, but I still like this figure a lot. It's definitely an upgrade from her last one, and I I, I, I hate to do it, but I gotta do it. Coming in at the number four spot, guys, I'm gonna... Oh, God. Coming in at number four, guys, I am gonna go with Eric. Now, this actually shocks the hell out of me. It's a fantastic head sculpt. The tattoo detail is insane. The legs are so stiff. Like, are 
are you guys hearing this? Like, I feel like the legs are super stiff, and he does have Johnny Gargano syndrome, which is very unfortunate for this figure. I think if the legs looked a little bit better, and he wasn't so John Brown short compared to Ivar over here, and he didn't have the, the Johnny Gargano, like, his tattoo detail and his head sculpt and everything is, is up here, but then when you get into all the issues with, like, the height and the Johnny Gargano syndrome and the leg stiffness and things of that nature, it brings it back down to a regular level, but it's still better than Ricochet and Bailey. so I have him coming in at number four. Coming in at number three, guys, we're gonna go with Kyle O'Reilly. Now, Kyle O'Reilly is so good. I love the head sculpt. I like the attire. Obviously, this is supposed to be the War Games gear, so I'm basing it off the War Games gear. If this was the War Games figure, it would be at the number three ranking, just like this. And I don't think, you know, the, the attire falling off, we've been waiting on this figure for so long, and to have it now, or I guess everybody else has it now. I, I don't have my War Games gear yet, but we've been wanting the War Games gear for a long, long time now, and part of the ranking style, part of the ranking, it takes into consideration the parts used, and the posability, and the excitement level for the figure, and the need for the figure, and all these different things, so for that reason, I have him coming in at number three. And for the two-in-one ranking, guys, who is it going to be? Coming in at the number two spot, I'm going to go with my boy Kevin Owens, and number one, we have Ivar. Now, I love both of these figures. I think they're definitely the two best in the set. I love the Kevin Owens. The only thing keeping it from number one is honestly the beard and hair color. If the beard and hair color were, were perfect, it would be my favorite figure in the set, but since I do have to repaint it, it's got to be deducted, and number one has to be Ivar, bro. The posability on this thing, the accessories, the head sculpt, the just the feel goodness of the figure and everything, this is a damn good figure, and it is going to be up there with everybody on the, uh, you know, the top figures of the year so far. No doubt about it, he's going to be on everyone's top 10 list. It is a great figure. It reminds me a lot of the Otis figure we got. It just feels so good in the hand, fun to pose around, but that is my ranking right there. We have Ivar, Kevin Owens, Kyle O'Reilly, we got Eric, we have Bailey, and then we have Ricochet. But overall, guys, if you would like to pick up any of the figures you saw in today's video, definitely go check it out at Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com, so that you guys can pick up any of these. Save some money over there. Don't forget to leave a like so we can hit the goal and comment down below for a future shout out in a video. Shout out to Diva Taylor for this comment on our last video. Who else wants to see Balor Club versus Bullet Club, Finn Balor, AJ Styles, and the Good Brothers versus Kenny Omega, Cody, and the Young Bucks? I think this would be immaculate, bro. Holy Christ on a bike. I also would like to see Finn Balor versus AJ Styles versus Kenny Omega. I think that would be a damn good. That's probably one of my top dream matches to see is a triple threat like that. You could even throw in a ladder or, or some sort of stipulation. Still think it would live up to the bang. Huge shout out to Diva Taylor again for the comment on our last video. So be sure to leave us a comment here and let's reach that goal of 2,000 likes somehow if we can do that. I would greatly appreciate it, but I overall enjoyed this set. I think it's a very nice set. I think a lot of people think this is one of the best sets in a while, so I, I, I think I would agree with that. Not thinking about what's been coming the last few sets, but off the top of my head, this just seems like a really powerful set. But I'm getting the hell out of here, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. Surgery coming up on all these fools, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.